Embassy has hit its first stable release on Crates.io, which means that embedded development in Rust has hit a fairly significant milestone, in my opinion. Building embedded systems typically refers to small electronics that most people wouldn't classify as a computer. Your keyboard, an audio interface, a label printer, an SD card reader, and so on. This work typically targets a microcontroller like the Pico, and these microcontrollers often have limited resources to do computing with. My laptop, for example, has 64 gigabytes of RAM, but a Pico has 264 kilobytes of SRAM and two megabytes of flash memory. This is an area that I think Rust can really shine in, so I'm really excited to see it making progress. So then what actually is Embassy? And on the left, you can see some Embassy code that I'm leaving up on screen so that you can read it. And on the right, we can see a whole bunch of different crates. When I talk about Embassy, what I'm really referring to is this wide collection of crates for embedded development. So when I say Embassy had its first release on crates.io, we're actually talking about many different packages, not one mega runtime. This is important because it's a bit of a trend line in the Rust ecosystem that powerful collections of packages are developed this way. Bevy, New Shell, Embassy, and more all publish many useful packages that can be used independently or together. Possibly the most important set of crates is the HALs or hardware abstraction layers. These HAL crates enable the use of safe Rust to take advantage of whatever your hardware of choice is. The hardware abstraction layers that were published include support for the Raspberry Pi RP2040, which is the microcontroller used in the Pico series we saw earlier in the video, the STM32 families, and Nordic Semiconductor's NRF series. All of these hardware abstraction layers are based on top of the embedded HAL crate, which recently hit 1.0 itself. In addition to these HALs, Embassy provides support for a variety of different networking stacks and functionality. Embassy USB, for example, provides a device side USB stack. CYW43 implements the Pico W Wi Fi driver, and other Embassy net crates provide more networking functionality in addition. The NRF soft device repo provides Nordic's soft device Bluetooth stack, including support for Bluetooth low energy. And Embassy Time, which we can actually see here on the left under Timer, provides timekeeping functionality, including the instant and duration types that you might be used to when using the Rust standard library. Overall, Embassy provides an incredibly approachable API for building embedded applications, which you can see in the examples folder on GitHub, which has a number of examples for a bunch of different HALs and other usages. In this case, if we go into the RP, which is the RP2040 for the Pico, we can see a basic blinking example, which is only a couple lines, that uses GPIO pins as well as Embassy time, in addition to other utilities like dformat. In this case, we've set pin 25 to be the pin that we're going to turn on and off more or less. We set high, we wait a second, we set low, we wait a second, and we loop forever. Overall, the big effect of this release is now developers don't have to depend on Git hashes, which unlocks publishing crates that depend on the embassy crates to crates.io. Effectively, the ecosystem around embassy can now live on crates.io with everything else, and I'm looking forward to seeing what people do over the coming months. We'll have more embedded videos over the coming months as well, so I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.